Welcome to the second of this video series for veterinary professionals. Does Tommy have FIP? In this video, we will examine Tommy's history to see if we can find a clue to his clinical signs and to determine whether or not FIP should be in the list of differential diagnoses. For FIP to be possible, the cat must have had an opportunity to become infected with feline coronavirus the virus which causes FIP. FIP is not a condition you tend to see in free roaming stray or feral cats, for example, because outdoor cats usually bury their feces and they bury the virus at the same time. The virus tends not to survive more than a few days outdoors. Tommy's history is that he came from a rescuer in 2006 so there was a chance at the rescuer's multi-cat environment to become infected with feline coronavirus. So my initial reaction would be to put a tick next to that part of the algorithm. But that was three years prior to presentation and cats who develop FIP usually do so within about the first 18 months post-infection. For my PhD, I followed 820 cats who had been naturally infected with feline coronavirus. We identified them from samples sent to our diagnostic laboratory at the University of Glasgow Veterinary School, and we invited the cats' guardians to take part in the study. The statistician calculated that by 36 months post-infection, the risk of FIP had fallen to around 4.8%. But you can see from this survival curve that it levelled off pretty much at about 18 months post-infection. Thus the chances of Tommy having FIP were certainly less than 5%, just from history alone. We published the study in the American Journal of Veterinary Research. I generally put references in the bottom right of the screen, and of course they're in the notes which are available to catvirus.com veterinary subscribers. Back to Tommy's history. He lived in a three-cat household. That again suggests a possible opportunity for FECOV infection. But the important thing here was that no new cats or kittens had been recently introduced. FECOV infection tends to die out in stable households with fewer than 10 cats. Unless, of course, they're unlucky enough to have a carrier cat. To save time in the consulting room, you can download this Step 1 questionnaire from the downloads page of catvirus.com for cat guardians to fill out in the waiting room. I've covered most of the possibilities for coronavirus infection in the questions, so if you see answer no to all the questions, FIP is very unlikely indeed. So, next question. Question, was he a pedigree cat? No, so we put an X there. This question is again about opportunity to become infected with coronavirus because in many studies, 70% of the cats with FIP were purebred. Was Tommy less than two years old? No, so another cross there. All ages of cats can develop FIP. It really depends on what age they were when they became infected with feline coronavirus. But the majority of cats with FIP are kittens or very young cats, and Tommy was middle-aged. Had he been subjected to any stress recently? Again, the answer was no, although he was quite an anxious cat. So at the end of step one, we have mostly crosses against all the risk factors for FIP, and one tentative dubious tick. Therefore, it is time to progress to video 3 of this series and step 2 of the FIP diagnosis algorithm, the clinical signs. If you found this video useful, please give it your vote and become a subscriber to the channel. Help keep the Cat Virus website and videos advertisement free by becoming a catvirus.com subscriber there is a link to the subscriber page in the notes below. Thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.